All right. Sorry, we are so late, guys. I'm gonna take this from you. We'll We've sure. got <laughs> child in tow, so it's gonna be. Hey, hey. Don't you know worry, what? Grandma's gonna be here any second. I'm gonna keep this, and you can do it. <laughs> oh. Okay, let me know. Are we are we all up and good? We're good. We're good. We're good. All right, I'm gonna step out while yeah, you do your thing. Yeah. Okay, Hi. awesome. So, why don't we give it an official kickoff so when everyone watches the recording, they at least don't have all that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hello, everybody. My name is Curtis Johnson, and welcome to AMZ Seller Real Talk. Is that the I name of this so. thing? I don't know. I haven't been here in a while. That's what it is, right? <laughs> AMZ Seller Real Talk. Yeah. That's the name of our show. <laughs> That's an inside joke for anyone who's been following. There's one I named it, what was it, like MBS Seller Real Talk yeah. or something ridiculous like that, and I didn't even know the name of my own podcast. So that was fun. I'm joined with, uh, here with uh, Jade Coleman. Finally. Yay. Hi. How's it going, guys? Um, so yeah, for anyone who's been following also, we're like 14 episodes in, and you were supposed to be co-hosting this with me every single time, and I think you've been in two? Maybe three? Uh, yeah, something like that. Three, That's four. So bad. Well, so bad. you know, kids, they, they grow kids, up and then they're yeah. more dependent on you. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's sort of like uh, easier when they're really newborn, really hard, and then it gets easier by the time they're, what, like 18? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. No, no, it's not how it no, works. No, that's not really how it works. <laughs> um, we are joined by uh, Shane Oglow. He is uh, the founder of PR Reach. And uh, so, hello, Shane. Good to, uh, good to finally get you on here. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, I know. I know we've been, uh, we've been talking about doing this for, what, uh, three months? Something like that? My yeah. Goodness. Yeah, I think when we originally talked, you were like, we're just going to be starting a podcast and you're just getting That's going. Right. So, it's, so it's all good. You were literally glad, one I'm of the first people we talked to. Yeah. That's right. Oh, good. I didn't oh, know that. Oh, my goodness. Well, I know. It's good to have you then. I know, right? Like, I literally look at the email thread and it's like 20 messages long oh, and I'm like, no. oh, so bad. Okay, um, well, now. now, but so Shane, so you were just telling Jade where you're from and it, it sounded very interesting and I was handling a bunch of AV stuff. So I, I figured you could, we could start with that because it was an interesting little tidbit. Sure. I mean, I'm actually from Canada, uh, but, I'm Canadian uh, too. but I live in, where, where from? London, Ontario. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, but no. um, it's like the I'm from, redheaded I'm from... stepchild of Toronto. <laughs> I'm from the good part of Canada, the West. <laughs> so like Vancouver, right? <laughs> That's right. There we go. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm sort of obligated to say that. No matter where yeah, in the no, East, fine. where you're from, I'm going to say I'm sorry. So, uh, but, but, but yeah, I live. Sorry. I live in Europe. I'm sorry. Uh, you're sorry. Hi. How's it going? Yeah. Yeah. Good? yeah. Let's let's try not to be so sorry. Yeah. No, um, right. Yeah. No. I, yeah. I I live in the the tiny 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 little country of Andorra, um, in between Spain and France. Wow. It's uh, about 70,000 people live here. Wow. Um, wow. There's no airport. There's no trains. There's just two roads, a road going to France and a road going to Spain. Oh, that sounds um, that's actually, awesome, actually lovely. That sounds lovely. It sounds like something. Out it of is lovely. Book. It sounds like something Dane and w where Dane and would make sure to hit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. With and, you know, I, I always like to say it's like if Walt Disney designed a country, this is it. There's no crime. Oh. I mean, there is zero crime. In fact, when I moved here, there is this story about, I guess some guys came down from France and they did like an armed robbery of a jewelry store. This is like, I don't know, maybe nine, 10 years ago. It's uh -huh. still, it's like an urban legend. It's like, remember the robbery? You know, the old guys <laughs> talking. When you had to trek uphill in the snow both ways. And exactly, <laughs> exactly. There's, there's no garbage on the streets. There's no potholes. Wow. You would wow. never see someone on drugs or a homeless person or a drunk person or... A, it's just, it's just a, it's safe. Uh, there's almost no tax, uh, or wow. very little tax. Um, it's only about a two and a half hour drive to Barcelona. So if you want to go somewhere, hey, it's nice. no big deal. And coming from Canada, I mean, two and a half hours, it's like going to the store to get milk, that's right? Like so, to, yeah, that's, yeah. that's like finding your local yeah. Walmart. Yeah. Um, there you go. Very yeah. cool. So then um, from what I recall, you've been, you've been also a seller from way back when, was it 2013 that you started? <laughs> Yeah, so somewhere around there. Yep, yep, yep. And that That's sort of awesome. first big wave of the first private label sellers with you know Amazing dot com and all the you know we're, we're oh, so you first... came in through Amazing as well. Yeah, yeah, ASM two, and um, nice. and then I was became a mentor, and then I did the training for I think ASM four and five or five and six. I don't know. It's become like Rocky, like it's you know ASM, you know. <laughs> 
Is that the one with the going. evil Russian guy, or is that? That's right. <laughs> or the one where he's up on the stairs. Or is it one of the spinoffs? Oh. I don't know. I can never keep track. Yeah, yeah. Creed, Creed, but one, it's, it's, Creed it's two. Good. I don't yeah, remember. It's all good. <laughs> Made a lot of friends awesome. through there. A lot of wonderful, sure. wonderful people through that everything. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, it's a it's a tight community. So. So then, yeah. um, okay. So then, let's kick this thing off. Why don't you um, give us a bit of an idea? Because, like, you know. People who are hopping on here obviously can presume that if someone's coming on as a guest on the podcast, they obviously have something that warrants them being here. So there's kind of like an immediate assumed, okay, yeah, we obviously know that you're, you've got some set of skills or you're, you have success in Amazon. So I guess starting back in 2013, because I know your success started very early, why don't you kind of give us sort of what brought you into Amazon? how quickly you got successful and then what's the journey from there to now? Yeah. So I was never, uh, I was never an online, uh, entrepreneur kind of guy, really. I was, I was a trader, which is online stuff for, you know, almost 12 years, but that's different. You know, that's, that's a very niche thing. Um, I barely knew what a URL was when I started. Um, (laughs) and you know, I, I got in and I just, I just decided, um, I was going through some changes in life and, and career changes and trading wasn't working well anymore. And I was beating my head against the wall. High frequency trading machines blew out the way I oh, used yeah. to trade and just didn't work anymore. And um, um, I just I just knew this was going to work. I saw the model. I saw the mm-hmm. things. I thought, no, there's no way I will fail. I will do whatever it takes to be successful. And so I just kept that. I, you know, I had a, a job at the time and um, I just – did both like most people do, you know, and, right. until it gets big enough where it can, where you can let go. Right. And uh, yeah, I did, did pretty good. I think within about a year, just less than a year, just over, I can't remember. So like that. Um, I, I barely remember what year it was. Um, I think we <laughs> did like over a million in revenue. I guess that's right. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I have, a, I, I don't remember dates that well. To me. <laughs> Someone asked me the age of one of my kids. and I honestly oh. really don't know. I have to like one, two, three. You know, I'm I'm kind of lucky in that sense because both my wife and I are forgetful when it comes to dates. So I'm like, babe, what's my anniversary? Oh, what's our anniversary? Okay. And she's like, shit, let me check the calendar. Yeah, we had to program ours in the calendar because we always, you know, like a week later, we're like, oh, yeah. Happy yeah, anniversary. she can't really beat you over the head for forgetting the anniversary when she didn't know it either. So we got lucky. But so yeah, I've so got a little tip. You were saying a million. Oh, yeah. no, no, no. Tip first. Important. Marriage is. Yeah. So. Get married on your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. That's awesome. On Ultimate your birthday, birthday not on her birthday, right? Ultimate birthday present so long as you stay together. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyways, so I uh, kind of rolled there... over what you said, which was really important, which is you were making how much in the first year? <laughs> you hit a million? Yeah, a million. I think we did, did... Yeah, I did over a million uh, in revenue. You know, I wish it was profit, but it's not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And uh, you know, just from there, I just started helping out in the community a little bit and being a mentor and all that stuff. And one thing led to another. Um, you know, then over the years, you know, I've had different brands or different involvements and in brands, things like that. But I think with like with a lot of people, there was a little bit of burnout too. And you know, and, mm-hmm. and we knew that the only constant would be change on Amazon. Yes, and we knew that things were going to grow and change rapidly. Yeah, that, that's right. very, very true. You know, back then was the Wild West. There's all kinds of loopholes and crazy <laughs> stuff. Most of those have been closed up. But, I know. you know. Five-star review clubs, uh, et cetera. So yeah. Much stuff. <laughs> so much. Yeah. So yeah. Much and, and little platform <laughs> hacks, too. Yeah. yeah. Platform yeah. hacks. But the other thing is, is we knew that there'd be all kinds of peripheral things around Amazon, whether it was training and coaching or software or you know, support services. Look at how many people have made careers out of that in yeah. massive business, true. more yeah, so true. Than, than, than the core thing. And I think that's the direction I went a little bit and a lot of friends I, I know went. So you're still involved with the Amazon, just not that day to day. Like I don't log into Seller Central every day like I sure. used to. So every now and then I log in, I'm like, what the heck is this? Like, <laughs> I know. They, they, changed. <laughs> they changed it again. What happened to them? Yeah. Um, so so if, if, if we... Yeah, if we want to talk about all oh, the details of the new report on Amazon, I'm the wrong guy to talk to. Totally uh, fine. Yeah, but but I deal with strategy and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, you guys yeah. Can, can deal with that. Yeah, uh, but yeah, that's sort of been the, the journey. And then you know, PR reach. I'm actually not the founder. 
Um, it was oh, actually founded shoot, by sorry. a friend of ours, Rob Burns. And I'm actually not the CEO either. I'm the president. So you no, basically that'd be blew funny. It. He's like, actually, I, you know, I'm, I, uh, I'm a janitor. <laughs> I make sure that the bathrooms are really clean. <laughs> they do they a good job. me to reach here. out. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, you know, you have, you have to wear a lot of hats, right? So we'll, yeah, I'll just yeah. be the CEO right. today. And, that's right. yeah. <laughs> no big deal. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah. So I, yeah. I was looking into into what you do um, as far as you because you don't just cover Amazon. It's also off of Amazon and and, and other areas as well. Yeah. You guys have quite a bit of um, different tools that you're able to use. And one thing that I learned. And I know I'm, I've been a seller for 10 years and now I'm showing my, <laughs> my, my ignorance in some areas. But um, you do the edit. Um, you guys help with editorials on Amazon. And yeah, so, that's yeah. one thing we do. Uh, uh, actually, what a lot of that? stuff we do is even on <laughs> yeah. the website. Exactly. Yeah. See? So now I know what it is and I know you know what it is. Because well, now just I do. Read yeah. About. Yeah. But, no, yeah. but for most people, because realize, obviously, Shane, I know you know this and watch. He's like going to clam up after I say this. But this is live. So everyone's watching this now. So. No, but point is the we want the audience to also know what that is because I, I don't think that everyone does. I really don't think everyone. No. Does. Sure. Yeah, and, and and I will say too that that you know while we do have a lot of Amazon stuff going on or or blended hybrid businesses where you know they've got Shopify, they've got physical retail, they've got whatever, we're sort of starting to specialize in driving outside sales and traffic. We do specifically Amazon stuff, but because I think that's where everyone needs to go. If you want to grow a real brand. You, you need Amazon. to be off of Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. It just, we can get into that later. But editorial recommendations are a cool thing. They call it recommended articles in the UK. Um, it was only a few countries that had them, but now practically everyone's rolling it out. Um, it's basically when you go into Amazon and you type in, you know, yoga pants for women or you know, silicone spatula or kitchen gadgets or something, uh, yeah. it shows up usually at the top of page one, sometimes more towards the middle, but usually the top. And it's an article written by a third party, uh, right. an authority third party, magazines, bloggers, members of the on-site associates program. And basically we are placing you there. And there's you know, usually up to five uh, products placed there. You'll see three visibly usually. And then sometimes mm -hmm. a little arrow so you can click over and see a couple more if there is a couple more. Sure. And that's just giving you, it's kind of like having a paid review at the top of Amazon. It, it, it's, yeah. it's brilliant. And, yeah. and with our, we actually have a, a new pricing scheme. You're, you're only paying for, for, for um, you know, attributed sales. Your ACOS right. is somewhere you know, just above 15%. I mean, who wouldn't want to have a 15% wow. ACOS? Yeah, that's um, amazing. Yeah, it's another tool that the, we can use that I didn't even know was there. So, Yeah, the, the, there's, there's some caveats um, and there's some extra things that we do. So uh, when you submit your ASIN to us, uh, what we do is we take a look at it and we allow you to choose up to three keywords you want to rank for, okay? Mm -hmm. What we're doing now, and I don't know if anybody else is doing this, but we won't even try and place you if that keyword's not on page one. It used to work in the old days when there wasn't many editorial recommendations out there because Amazon would show you far and wide. Now, right. you'll be disappointed in your article because Amazon just won't split test it against the other ones. If you're on page five, yeah. forget about it. It's not going to happen. It's so funny that you say that because like, we have PPC Logic, which is a you know AI-based uh, management agency for PPC, right? And we ran into the same thing. We were like, hey, yeah, let's just bring everyone in. And then very quickly, we came to realize, hey, listen – not all Amazon doesn't necessarily treat you in the advertising space very well if you don't have your ducks in a row. No, it's a big, mm -hmm. it's it's a big deal. Yeah. So it makes sense that you guys yeah. kind of have to limit who you let in. Yeah, and and it's just because we uh, because we give you reporting, we give you metrics. You'll see how many sales you get. You'll see what share of voice you're getting for what keywords. It's very right. very important, and we've got ways to manipulate that on on our back end, but. Basically, what we do is we take your ASIN, we make sure, that, hey, okay, the keywords you're looking for, they're on page one, great. Mm -hmm. We submit it. We try to find a publishing partner who's a member of the Onset Associates program who would be appropriate if you're selling auto tools or not going to you know, look for a baby blogger, right? <laughs> right? Get the article written. Well, we shouldn't anyways. Yeah. Get the article written, which can take a little while. It's, it's dealing with publishers like herding cats. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, yeah. we get that done. And then we take it to Amazon to get it approved. And that's pretty much the process. It takes four to eight weeks. It's kind of a pain that you got to sort of hurry up and wait, but that's all sure. we can yeah. do. And um, then, we, then we monitor the, the, uh, the performance of it. And there's things we can do too. So 
usually if we've placed it with a good keyword for a good product um, and your product has to qualify, it'll do pretty well. But yeah. quite a lot of time, we'll see after three to six months, the performance will start to decline. That's a fairly normal pattern. It doesn't always happen, but it can. Mm -hmm. And it's normal because Amazon starts to split test other articles and do other things. All we do is refresh it, boop, goes back on top of the AB split wow. testing nice. pile, and we're good to go. We can also get it rewritten. Um, and we have a particular strategy where we try and strangle out all the primary keywords with different articles because Amazon will render up to five articles maximum for any particular keyword. So, um, yeah, yeah, I, I won't get too too far into that strategy because there's yeah, a lot right, of right. stuff we want to cover. But it's yeah. it's it's a very powerful tool. The other thing that we do, which is to me more exciting, I mean, I think if you've got a decent ASIN that qualifies, and to qualify, all you need is roughly over 100 reviews, um, it'd be a four-star higher rate, right? Be in the top 20% of your category and have that that keyword on page one. Um, so for brand new sellers, th this wouldn't be appropriate for your product. You know, it's right. got to be around for a little while. I think right. you need to generate 20 or 30 grand a month in your Seller Central account, not from that particular ASIN, but for your entire account. Okay. There are exceptions to all those, slight exceptions, but those are general guidelines. And that's great because right. you occupy that real estate at the top of Amazon, right? So you, now you can have an organic, you can have a PPC, you can have a, a headline ad, or, or I guess I call them brand, ad, brand ads now, and you can have the um, editorial recommendations. So that's a lot of real estate you can occupy yeah. at the top of page one. It's going to converge, uh, uh, increase your you know the number of clicks and conversion and all that good stuff. Right. So the other part that's really exciting, and you can probably hear kids crying out there, yeah. You know, it's so funny. I took off my headphone because I wasn't sure if that was on our side. <laughs> yeah. I know my yeah. phone started ringing. I was yeah. like, uh-oh, is that That's mine? Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I know. But we blend it with something called off-site articles. Uh -huh. And off-site articles are exactly that. It's a different publishing group. There are some you know, crossover publishers, but we've got some big names in there, like like uh, Best Reviews, Digital Tens, Wirecutter. Okay. Yeah. There's, there's some big, well-known companies there. And what we do is we put you on a spreadsheet and every month we submit you to the offsite group. Now the offsite group will go through this and look through and say, oh, this is something appropriate. If you get published there, not only can it drive a lot of sales, all that sales and traffic coming back to Amazon listing from a high authority site jacks yeah. up mm -hmm. your organic mm -hmm. rate. So your, your organic mm -hmm. rankings go through the roof, right? All the savvy guys I know I'm dealing with, even the guys who who do like, hey, you know, we've got a low, low, low margin profit. You know, we're barely at 17%. We're just trying to work on volume. They don't care if they don't make a right. dime off the off site because sure. they're getting yeah. the organic juice, right? Right. Now, yeah, if you've got a normal, you know, this is a brand. Yeah. This is an actual brand. People are talking about yeah. you. 100%, 100%. And, and you know, if, if you're kind of got the, you know, if you go through any, you know, training course for Amazon, they always tell you, you know, be a 30 to 50% profit margin or whatever, whatever their number is. If, and that's what I consider normal, then great. You're making money on the outside sales and traffic and you're getting the boost. So yeah. why wouldn't you? I mean, it's, it's right. madness. And then, of course, we have techniques then to ramp those things up because you're also getting some SERP results. So if I, if, if let's say you've got, you know, some what little gadget that? product. Um, you said what results? SERP, SERP, SERP results. Uh, uh, so Google search engine okay. ranking results. Right. Yep. So if you if I if you get an article published by one of these publishers, wonderful, and you've got your little tech gadget, and I go on to Google and I type in you know best tech gadget gift for teen or you know I don't know whatever keyword I'm searching. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you know, you see these listicles, you'll see these bloggers, you'll oh, see these yeah. you know these like articles. And, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Because they've got a hell of a lot of domain authority. So what we can yeah, do is right. we can drive links over there using things like press releases to push that up even more. Let that nice. be the traffic driver. right? Nice. So we've, we've got a whole bunch of uh, techniques around that. Oh, one other thing I'll mention, and this is, you know, make supplement, you know, uh, supplement sellers squeal. Because supplement sellers have, have a tough gig, right? I mean, it's, 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 it, it, yeah. it, let's face it, it's a tough gig. You know, you can't get into right. editorial recommendations, at least not right now. Right. There's rumors that it's going to be opened up soon. So if you're selling CBD, keto, you know, whatever supplements, yeah. Amazon's not allowing editorial recommendations right now. But you can do offsite articles. And here's the other cool thing is you can offer deals. So let's say you've got a 10% coupon for the month of June, you know, save 10, you know, your little coupon code, boop, yeah. give it to the, to the publishers. And they love it because right. they're the hero giving their readers 
this discount. Totally. And some of these publishers have, you know, email lists in the tens or hundreds of thousands. So they can do email blasts out to their list. They might sure. do push notifications on mobile. Sometimes they'll take out Google ads. It just depends on how much commission they make and how, how strong that play is for them. Because for them, it's a pure affiliate play. Yeah. So that's, that's a, it's a, it's an interesting thing. Almost nobody knows about offset articles, but it's this hidden gem secret dream. Like it's, it's like, yeah. Why is that's what I was going to say. That? Like you filled this this amazing uh, this amazing gap, this hole. You guys found something yeah. where it's it's a needed and wanted. I mean, you know, for me, I'm my my wheels are turning now. Yeah. You trying to figure out like, okay, great. Like, how should we... <laughs> well, well, it begs the question. Yeah. So, between both of these advertising types, why are these so? I guess not known, or what is it about them that makes it something that isn't front and center for most sellers? Well, I think, you know, I remember about uh, um, just before the whole pandemic nonsense started, um, I was talking to a guy at a conference and he had he had figured out the the on-site or the, the editorial recommendation thing and he had a, a playbook to do it. And there is a way you can manually do it. It's very inefficient. I don't really know if it works that well anymore. You might get the odd placement, but it's, just, it's not worth it in my opinion. But it wasn't something that Amazon was publishing inf information about. You saw that it was something about the on-site associates program. So people were Googling that, trying to figure it out. And well, how do I get in? How do I approach them? You know, you, you find out. So if I, if I sell yoga pants for women mm -hmm. and I see an article there by XYZ Yoga Magazine, well, I could Google them. I can message them and ask them. And maybe I could get in that way, I suppose. Yeah. Um, it's pretty inefficient and you probably won't get a response back. But... Um, I think that was basically the SOPs for people before that. So it was it wasn't something like anybody was talking about because nobody knew how the hell to get in. Okay. Yeah, um, and it's not like Amazon always, you know, says, "Oh, hey, look, we have this new thing. Yeah. Yeah. Jump on this train." Exactly. And yeah. even now, they almost now it's like, like in France, hide all the good things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The one thing I will say is uh for markets uh, like it's now in canada uh, we can place in canada and the uk especially uk is a wide open book i've wow. seen sales increase over 900 percent over three months from editorial recommendations wow. if you're sort of first to market you know if, right. if you're no one there because sure. because remember when i said you can, you can submit three keywords well if you get uh, an article in, in a niche which nobody's got an editorial for they're gonna amazon's gonna show you for keywords up the yin yang you know 12 right. 20 who knows yeah, right totally. Eventually, that's going to get narrowed down as more people come in. And so now we're seeing that in the States. And that's why we're only submitting ASINs or, or uh, your keywords if you're on page one, because we know it's just not going to perform very well if you're buried on page two, three, four, five. Right, so, right. And you just don't want to suck up somebody's money. Yeah. And... Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, no, I don't. Um, <laughs> no, I understand what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but seriously, on the UK, uh, it's still a it's still a wide open opportunity in a lot of categories. So if you're selling there, I would jump on it now because it's the first mm -hmm. mouse gets the cheese type type of a situation. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Nice. Definitely top yeah. of the pile kind of thing, huh? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so you said so you have offsite. You drive to Amazon, and you also drive offsite to um, to other uh, to your website. <laughs> No. Right. So mm. Shopify, other platforms. <laughs> well, it's probably not exactly offsite, but what is it? So we're not actually doing that much anymore. Um, okay. Technically, we can. And the uh -huh. reason why is because the publisher has to be on the same affiliate that your website is. Your website has to have an affiliate program hooked up. Okay. okay so you can't just, because they have to have track every sale, right? Because sure. you're going to be right. charged on every sale. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So that's why we're pretty much just using exclusively to drive back to Amazon. Um, yeah. Which makes sense in many ways, because like you said, it is it does give your Amazon listing a completely unfair advantage. Oh, which is You're amazing. Driving in. That's what we want. Yeah. We want yeah, the unfair exactly, advantage. Exactly. Amazon, it's literally yeah. who has the most unfair advantages. <laughs> I mean, no no black hat things or anything, but you know, whatever. whatever no, I guess, I guess it's just advantages, not really unfair, because yeah. it's not like well, no one can come to you except for a select few people. Right. But yeah. Yeah, it's it's definitely, it's definitely sure. that kind of a situation. Unfair advantage. Right? <laughs> unfair advantage, <laughs> I, I, it's funny. I was actually looking that up the other day. It's like height would be an unfair advantage, not like, you know, I practiced more than you. <laughs> yes. Yes, that's right. Yeah, I remember like you were talking about the um the old west days of um 
wild, wild, wild west, west days hmm. of, uh, <laughs> of Amazon. I used to write my own articles and um, do all my own research and do blog posts and um, social media postings and things like that. Mm. And I just, I would so much rather hire that out because it takes so much time. And then you, as, as a, you know, seller, I don't have as much reach as I would through someone who's got all the connections. Sure. I mean, that's yeah. just. It's true. Yeah. And especially if your company is named PR Reach. I mean, come on. I mean, that, that's like Reach with PR. You can't go wrong. <laughs> okay. So uh. then tell, tell me this. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so whether we'll, we'll, we'll take it, I guess, in two different areas. For someone who's brand new, not brand new as in like, I am thinking of selling on Amazon, but like, I have a brand Still on Amazon. For my product. Yeah. Exactly. Um, versus. And, and I'm not even saying that to denigrate that category, mm -hmm. but what you're talking mm -hmm. about isn't yet applicable to, to someone who's not selling on Amazon, obviously. Yeah, like on how to hunt a whale, you can't apply yep. it. On exactly, yeah, not yet, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Not yet. But um, so category of someone who's newly selling versus someone who's a veteran. Um, so I guess it's like two separate questions for you can pick whichever one you want first. But like if we're talking 2021, you know, we're already halfway through it, which is kind of crazy. Um, what what are these these actions that someone can do to drive traffic into Amazon from outside of Amazon? What are the things that are going to give, like what we were talking about, an unfair advantage? What are some strategies that people should be doing right now? Yeah, and that's a. I mean, I suppose that's always a million dollar question, and yeah. that's something that we really took under our wing to sort of specialize in um, because just you know so many people just try and compete with ppc like they just try and master ppc and, and that's great yeah. and it's important but um mm -hmm. we all know at the end of last summer you know some people call it the a10 update or whatever you want to call that algorithm update amazon took the weighting off ppc and they put it on outside sales and traffic so it's three times more effective why not focus on it it's right. going to build your brand anyways now like, i think you need to no i think you need to like emphasize what you just said there because yes. i think that's something that is missed by a lot of people yes i've heard so like i've heard i've talked to so many coaching program programs so many mentor groups where they're like listen stop trying to hop on to the newest hottest thing and only focus on like become a master at ppc and i generally speaking am an advocate of that. But what you said, I think needs to be highlighted because mm -hmm. that's a big mm -hmm. difference. Yeah, and my fear for any brand is that when you only sell on Amazon, you're on a one-legged stool. We all know there's a million horror sure. stories out there. We don't need to repeat them. You can be shut off tomorrow with very little or no recourse. And you know, for if, if you get pulled down tomorrow, your brand, who's gonna know? Who's going to care, to be honest, you're yeah, an unknown right. Amazon brand. If you want to start to make that leap, and this is for, you know, experienced sellers, maybe you, you hit 100K a month or, you know, whatever that number is for you where you feel confident and good. Okay, now it's time to start looking outside. I'm not saying abandon Amazon, not by any means. Mm -hmm. But um, building a real brand is going to do you a lot of favors. Number one, you will have a competitive advantage. Number two, you got brand recognition, authority, perceived value, and trust. You can charge higher prices. You'll have higher conversion rates. You'll sell your, your company for more when you go to sell. Mm -hmm. It makes it easier to bust into new marketplaces. So let's say, so every year back when I was in Canada, I used to go to Chicago for the, uh, what's the show there where you where you meet up with uh, physical, re I can't remember the name. They changed their name a few years ago, and that always it's throws me off. Physical retailers, IRCE? I think that's what it is um, now because I know we go there. Maybe. They have like a maybe. small e-commerce part, but it's gigantic. Takes up the entire Ooh, No, this is this is a no, this is a smaller thing. And you basically okay, you apply not. beforehand <laughs> and you and you get invited. So so you'll get fifteen minutes with Lowe's hardware, uh fifteen oh, minutes wow. with, okay. you know, whoever to try and get the physical retail. Basically to so when you go the there, yeah, yeah. So you, so you bring your products, your samples, and you need your sp product spec sheets, all the information, your prior okay. sales, this, that, the other thing. But if you've got all this external publicity from earned media, which is what we do to, to build big brands, it's like, oh, mm -hmm. shoot, okay. Because they want to make money, right? They're going to have it in your store and take up their shelf space because they want to make money. So it helps make that transition. And the other story we've heard probably a million times is, yeah, I set up Shopify. It's been up for a few months or six months, but yeah, I get the odd sale here and there. Yeah. yeah. That's a totally different game, right? You're responsible for your own traffic. It's tough. Like, unless you're an expert at it, this helps 
pave that way. We've already got some buzz. You've already got some Google love going on. Now we're just going to divert the traffic over to Shopify. It's not going to, you know, you know, make you a million dollars overnight, but it's a hell of a lot easier because you've got that brand weight behind you. Sure. Yeah. Um, going back to your question, I don't remember what the hell it was. A10, the A10 update, <laughs> basically highlighting that and like why people need to yeah, understand. Explain what, that a little bit better for people who have yeah. probably no idea what that is. Yeah. So Amazon did an update to their algorithm. Some people call it A10. Um, but uh, basically, and Amazon does this, you know, once a year, twice a year, you know, who knows, whenever. Sometimes and they just know, shift weight, we waiting around. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, sometimes we don't. And, but th they put about, three times more weight now on external sales and traffic than they do for PPC. Not that PPC is irrelevant, not by any means, right. yeah. but they're, they're showing that, Hey, this is important. They want to attract outside to, to their platform. And it's perfectly so going logical. Back to roots. Go yeah. back to the roots. Yeah. Well, uh, cause that's what we used to be. We yep. used to rank very high on um, Google uh, for some search terms our Amazon listing did um, several years ago and then and then PPC came in and that started dropping off and so they're going back yeah. full circle mm -hmm. yeah it's interesting it used to be okay. <laughs> well it's interesting and, and I guess maybe the point if you if you happen to have this insight on this is is all outside traffic treated equally meaning mm. there are all the social media platforms that could drive traffic in there's Google there's other you know the mm -hmm. review sites like you're talking about what is is some type of traffic better than others or is it all external traffic uh, yeah apparently apparently um interesting okay. you know and i i i can't sit and say oh 100 know this uh because i haven't done a study on it but okay. we all know what crappy traffic will do nothing yeah. that's what it'll right. do uh, but sometimes that crappy traffic is tainted with a really low quality buyer score that could be the reason so if you're going to those mm -hmm. cheapo rebate sites uh, you're going to get low quality buyers. That's all there is to sure. it. It's, mm -hmm. it's a pool of low quality buyers. It's not going to do you any favors. I would avoid it like the plague. Um, right. You could get your account into trouble and you're almost definitely going to be sandboxed or listing blocked. If they right. could ever leave a review, you're screwed. So just stay away from that. That that <laughs> Hey, and, and I, I mean, look, I, I know lots of guys who, who own these platforms and great idea when it came out. We all used it. It was fantastic. Yeah. But we yeah. knew the party was going to end sometime. That yeah, party's sure. over. It's time to go to the next party. Um, and, and, now, there's still search find buy and, and external right. uh, rebate style traffic that can work. You just got to stay away from from the low quality pooled groups of buyers. That, that's all. Yeah. And it's just sort of common sense. So it, my apologies to anyone who has one of those businesses. I'm not here to slam <laughs> you. That's the, well, it's not my intention, but at the same time, <laughs> I'm not going to risk my it account. It's a Canadian <laughs> thing. That's true. <laughs> Yeah. But, you know, and I'm OK I mean, with that, Shane, because here's the here's the honest to God truth. Um, everyone makes a living. Some people's living uh, isn't necessarily the best thing that we want everyone doing. And um, that's why this is real talk. Like, you know, we, we do yeah. we do want to know, like, OK, because here's here's the honest to God truth. If we're if we're talking turkey, for instance, um, there's a percentage of people who are listening to this who are definitely going to go check out what you guys do and are going to you know, sign up with you guys, get started. And we're very happy about that because we know the quality of the service that you guys offer. Mm -hmm. But there's a large chunk of people out there who will also just take what you're saying about A10 and other things like that and go do it themselves. And if you can tell them where mm -hmm. to go and where not to go, we're very happy about that. <laughs> so um, I guess also then, cause this could apply for someone who's just beginning as a seller or an advanced sure. seller yeah they let's say they even already have hired you right but they want to start working in other avenues you've got like we were talking about social media we've got google just basic ads what are where should someone spend their time where are they going to get the most bang for not their buck but their effort what is what is the right place to put their time well, um, I think it's on brand building efforts and pretty much everything we do, with the exception, we, we do run our own particular style of rebate things, which we, we don't lean on heavily. We, and we only do as a, as a long term. Back in the day, we used to do these big campaigns. We'd smash a listing with 500 or 1,000 units over two weeks or some nonsense. That's, that's gone. That's out the window. I don't, I don't know anyone who okay. does that anymore, mm -hmm. um, you know, long term. So there is sure. a place for that if you drip, drip things in. But we're all about long-term effects building a brand. So 
I think that if you start off with that mentality, you're going to do yourself a lot of favors instead of looking for the next tactic. I need 50 more sales tomorrow, even if it kills my account or if it dies the next day, always chasing that ball. And there's not sure. as much to chase as there used to be. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if, if you're a new seller and you've got a really low budget, that's okay. You know, there's some really economical things you can do and you probably end up doing it yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and that's okay. It's good to wear those hats because you learn the ropes a little bit. You pass it off to someone else when you're ready. Wonderful. Um, you know, everybody talks, you know, for years, content is king. It is. It is. It's a long, hard road. <laughs> yeah. Long, yes. hard road. Uh, now, there's shortcuts. There's shortcuts. And that's what we sort of specialize in. But even if you just start on that long, hard road and start building up for six months, a bit on social media just have a presence okay. there have something you know like you don't have to be an expert doing mm -hmm. one blog a month wonderful mm -hmm. it's not going to change your business right not going to change your business at all but it's going to lay a bit of a foundation so when you start to accelerate you've got something to lean on okay so right out of the sense. gate i always say and i i am biased because i've seen this work but you have to have a long-term approach we do press releases we do different types okay. of press releases for different types of situations one of the situations is where you're just pumping out one press release, two, whatever a month, whatever you're doing, but you just set it and forget it. Mm -hmm. One, two, three years down the road, you will dominate Google page one for all kinds of keywords, but it ain't going to happen overnight. Right. It's, it's cheap to do. It's probably the most cost effective marketing thing on the planet, but it's not going to, you know, in three months, you're not going to be, you know, trying to pick out your new Lambo. It's just not going to happen. Okay. Um, unless you've invented a better mousetrap and you've done something totally different, then we've got a different type of press release to try and get it to go viral, then maybe you will be picking out your own Lambo. But for the average seller who's who's selling, you know, their, their kitchen gadget or, you know, their silicone spatula with their super modified handle, that's cool. Yeah. But you expect a little a little slower pace. The other thing that we specialize in too, and it's not even I'm a little sad that people are going to our website because we're going through a huge revision right now and half the stuff's not even on there. But um, should I tell them to not go to is your gift website? guides? Just kidding. <laughs> That's right. You're yeah. like, actually, what we gift, end up gift now guides are a fantastic gonna... place to be. <laughs> With, I, sorry, I, I didn't catch that. I was talking. No, I was, just, I was joking. I was joking. Go ahead. It, it, it wasn't. It was okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, gift guides. That that's okay. another good place to be, and that's sure. oh, to me. Yeah the evolution of of influencers so i don't know if you did the same stuff i did so back maybe 2015 or something or 2014 i was you know i'd have this stupid long spreadsheet and i'd go into Tomason or other different influencer platforms and i was trying to find an influencer in my niche and you had no idea if their audience was fake or not or who knows yeah. right it's a total yeah. a, 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 it's enormous amounts of time for little to no return um, now those platforms are a little bit more advanced analytics, um, you know, more specialized. There's a lot of them now. That's one way to go. It can be pretty expensive because different right. influencers, of course, different costs. And that's why I love micro influencers so much because, hey, they may have only got an audience of 600 people, but sure. they're super engaged. And you know you'll get 30 orders or 50 orders or whatever. That number is wonderful, great. Um, yeah. what, a, what a great relationship. And, and you're building authority, you're building, you know, it's, it's a third party endorsement and that's all about trust. Um, so you can do this yourself. You can absolutely do this yourself. You can Google, you know, different terms and gift guides and look for uh, magazines and online journals and bloggers that have gift guides uh, and try and get in with them. You can do that. You can build a big spreadsheet if, if, yeah. if you've if, if you got the, the bucks, hire a VA, that's going to help you. Um, and you basically just got to start pitching. You got to, you know, you, you get an email and you start pitching. You're not going to get to contact the back by 99% of the people. Sure. Because yeah. most of the time they're, it's going to go to spam. They're going to ignore it. It's going to go to the wrong person. It, it's inefficient, but you can do it. If you, if you don't have the bucks, that's where you start. That's where I started. And you get the odd placement here and there. Um, and we, we have a thing where we're placing people every single month in gift guides and blogs. And that's for wow. people. It's for any type of seller regardless of how big you are, but for bigger sellers, we, you know, we've got PR earned media where we're going after tier one publications. You want to be in Cosmo magazine or Martha Stewart or Buzzfeed or Forbes, or whatever, the, whatever the, you know, whatever's appropriate for your product or service. Right. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's for those people who are, Hey, you know what? I just started my Shopify or I, I want to get in physical retail. I got Amazon dialed in. I'm doing half a million a month or whatever, whatever their number is. I generally recommend 
100K a month or more before you really want to look at a PR and earned media. Okay. But, uh, you know, for the, for the smaller guys, you can have a brand new account with five reviews. Poof, man, get into gift guides. Why not? Why not? Awesome. Yeah, totally. Awesome. The one thing to know is a lot of gift guides, you know, come out in the holidays, right? So, you know, they right. come out in November or something. They do them once but a we year. Have, we have Father's you got, Day coming up. That's right. We have Father's Day coming up. So that's why that's that right. people could jump on right now. Well, absolutely. And every quarter, there's actually a fairly major holiday, right? So we used to have this program where Almost we did it quarterly. Hmm. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> but, you know, a lot of these guys who do, or, or gals who do these big um, uh, gift guides once a year, who are big popular holiday gift guides, you have to apply by July or August of the very yeah. latest. Like you're yeah. just not getting in. So you got to think ahead. Of, just like ordering your inventory, right? You got you got to be ahead of the curve. Yeah. Um, and that's why that's what we do. So uh, just like so, we, we have a six month term to do this. Just like we do with our, our earned media, because here's a this is a common situation. Someone will come in and say, Shane, I've got this uh, you know beauty product or something, and I, I just it's my dream to be in. Glamour magazine or Cosmo or whatever it is, they actually want to be in the physical magazine. Okay, mm -hmm. that's fine. We've got our, we've got our, we've got contacts at every major media outlet in the U.S. Fine, we'll start working on that if it's appropriate. You got to realize that's like six, seven, eight months out. Like they've got their print yeah. schedule, the production schedule. Yep. Like, like it's not going to happen overnight. Right. Even the some websites. Publication. It's going to be also a little bit higher budget. Yeah. That, that, that's right. That's right. It, it, we're not charging per placement either. We just do a monthly fee and whatever. If okay. the placement costs a quarter million bucks, you're getting it for free practically. So right. the other thing is that um, even some websites will have a three-month content stack. They might say, hey, this is a fantastic product, but I don't think we can squeeze it in until September. It's normal. Yeah. That's normal. So in the meantime, we start knocking off the lowest hanging fruit we can yeah. as we work on these bigger publications. That Same thing sense. with the gift guides. You come to me with your kitchen gadget product. I think it's awesome. Well, we're going to pitch it for that that holiday gift guide, but mm -hmm. that's not, not coming out till November. Yeah, gonna, so in the meantime, we start now. knocking off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but we want we want to get you placements yeah. every single month, right? Every single yeah, month. Right. So we're going to be talking to bloggers and influencers just to get you stuff going now. But you that's can't awesome. expect it to change your business in one, two, or three months because it takes a while right. for those to, to spool up. Yeah. Well, and and then that's I think that's that's one thing that. You know, every time I help someone set up their Amazon, um, you know, get into Amazon or get into ASM or whatever, I'm like, look, this is not a get rich fast kind of deal. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, unless you hit that like lottery, you know, item or, um, you know, uh, product, yeah. then then you're, you're, you're looking at the long haul. You need to look at like not taking money out and just keep pushing, pushing, mm -hmm. pushing until you get this up and uh, where you need it to go. But it's not it's not like instantaneous here. Yeah, it's interesting because like the more that we also do this show is like I think I mentioned earlier episode 14, but also the with with us being managed by stats, we have connections out there to coaches and these mm -hmm. other programs. And it's funny because everyone wishes for the good old days back in 2013, 2015 of Amazon. And uh, is Amazon still that, well, legitimate get rich quick scheme? That's not a scheme that's legitimate. That's yeah. it's not, it doesn't exist anymore. No. The, the long and the short of it is, unless you're ready to build a real business, don't do it. Yeah. Don't do it. You, you yeah. like, yeah. like anything that's a legitimate business, you have to actually put in legitimate time, become professional at not just one or two little things, like like what you just said, or a little bit earlier with A10 and all this stuff, you can't just be good at PPC anymore. Mm -mm. Um, though if you're not even good at PPC, you're gonna have serious issues. Yeah. It sort of is it sort of is the pecking order. You you're gonna get screwed if you have a shitty product. Yep. <laughs> you're gonna get screwed if you don't, you know, have a good listing. Yep. You're gonna get screwed if you're not good at PPC. Yep. And it's starting to move over to okay, just like any other platform, if you're not good at everything else as well you're gonna get screwed yeah and yeah. that that's gonna maybe be a slow process of sales dying out over a long period of time or but amazon I, burying you like amazon oh, burying you guy. that's right like like we did it we were looking at it i don't remember how long ago this was this was back in january when we went to SellerCon. um we studied just a single page one 
and it's over 50% of everything on there is a non-organic listing, meaning it is paid in some yes, capacity yes. or another, or it's an Amazon Basics product. Yeah, and even on mm -hmm. your own listing, there are, are ads yeah. and, and sponsored <laughs> products. Pluck Here, people off yeah. of your listing. Where's the buy now button? Oh, that's it's right. right above this other product. Oh, that's, that's kind of shiny. Ooh, Ooh nice. that's got like a thousand reviews. This one only has <laughs> five. I think I'm gonna go over here. Yeah, so I guess, Shane, what you're saying is spot on. It's like, it's very interesting because it, we've seen this over time that mm -hmm. you can't get away with, you know, not being good at this game. Mm -hmm. You have to, you have to either be great at it yourself or bring on people to who are great and have them work on it for you. Yeah, professional versus right. hobby. It's, you know, if yeah, you're, if you're yeah, going to yeah. be a professional at it no. or, and it's, or it's if you want to make it big. Yeah. If you want to make it big. Yeah. 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 Well, there you go. I have a funny story about the PR. <laughs> yeah. I have a funny story. Go so here. We for 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 you know for bigger brands that the words appropriate we'll we'll get them placed in, you know, websites, and magazines, gift guides, trade shows, awards, like like the whole gamut, radio, television, whatever's whatever's appropriate. And I have a, a good friend in the UK and he bought a FBA business a couple years ago with with a partner in the states. And they sell uh, like tents and sleeping bags, stuff like that, outdoor stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's cool. They're, they're doing very well. They're growing. Uh, they're they're doing very very well actually, especially on the Shopify side. They've really grown the Shopify sales, which is is just tremendous because a lot of people struggle with that. They've done a very very good yeah. job. I've had nothing but adoration for them. But one of the guys is a very good friend, and they were going to start doing some some PR with us. And they're like, "Yeah, we we need to do this." I'm like, "Yeah, heck, let's do it." I jumped the gun a bit, and. Um, we pitched the producer of a television show and said, hey, what do you think if we have the host um, call up a member of the audience and they both have one of the tents and they have a contest to see how fast they can set it up? Because like the claim to fame was like you, anybody could do it in 90 seconds or something like that. Yeah. yeah. And um, and then afterwards, we'll give away 100 to like a boys and girls camp or something. And they're like, yeah, this is the best idea ever. So I'm super <laughs> excited. And I contacted my buddy, and he was like super excited. He was like, "I got to talk to my partner," and um, talked to his partner. His partner was a bit cool on the idea. I'm like, "Huh? Oh, okay. Well, fair enough. Well, why?" He said, "Well, you know, it's it's not exactly our demographic and stuff." I said, "No, no, I, I totally get that. It, and you're right. It isn't precisely your your demographic. But do you realize the value of this opportunity? Like, mm -hmm. we don't charge you extra. Like, you just we, you pay a small monthly fee to our. And that's what we do." He's like, "Yeah, I yeah, know. We're gonna pass." The cost of that, if you called the show, it was three hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars, and they poo-pooed it away. So we got on the phone within four hours. We had one of the largest tent manufacturers in the world that everyone knows. Their name it was like, "Hell yeah!" Are you kidding yeah, me? Of course. So those oh types of God. things don't happen all the time, but we also get uh, a lot of media people coming to us because our PR manager has been doing it for thirty years, okay. and she knows yeah. everyone. So sometimes we, oh my gosh, somebody flaked out, and we, we need a you know this product or this type of service, or this type of a person or whatever to, to fill this role, and we mm -hmm. can often place people quickly. Um, those things don't happen every day, obviously. Those sure. those, those big yeah, wins just just out of nowhere. Pure but, gold. <laughs> but it's uh, th there's so many opportunities out there, and people think that that you know you you can't compete in that space because you're a little guy. Well, it's not true. Yeah. Uh, it's harder. You know, yeah. and, and opportunities aren't going to flood to you every single day, but you don't need to pay through the nose. You you can do these things, and if your brand's ready for that, I mean, gosh, that that that's yeah. that's the missing component. And you know, the other funny thing, the observation, I, I guess I always knew, but it really just hit me, uh, um, you know, maybe last year. Even the biggest sellers I know, guys doing like ten million a month or some stupid big number, Amazon was literally their first business. They never yeah, worked right. in physical retail. They never did advertising. They didn't know a damn thing. They live only in the Amazon universe, and they've mastered it. Yes, maybe they run some Facebook ads or Google ads, or yeah, but but that's the extent of it. They don't understand the power of PR and building that brand yeah. outside of Amazon. I shouldn't right. say everyone, but, but the large majority. If you think about it, you know, so many people who've done this great Amazon opportunity for so many of them, it was really their first business. Um, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Or so, first successful business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. First successful business for some of them. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah or you got those guys who are doing 10 million a month and, and it's, you know, they got 
nine million nine hundred thousand in cost or something right yeah <laughs> literally <laughs> literally and you you just see the big shiny object that is gross revenue um very yeah. cool no danny you can't leave yet because i need i'm just about to ask for your help <laughs> so so long and the short of it is basically i'm we're going to so for anyone who's not familiar with how we do this show um we have the part that's available live for everyone on Facebook. And obviously this will be then added to as a post on our Facebook page, as well as sent over to YouTube and sent over other places and this place and that and Apple for podcasts and all this other stuff. Um, and before we jump off of this part, we're gonna you know see if there's any questions that anyone has. Okay, good, no questions, perfect. Um, but then what we're going to do is for specifically the managed by stats users, what we're going to do, oh, oh okay, I'll, I'll finish someone, this train of thought and on. then you hit me with that. I have a question. Um, <laughs> but what we do is we'll, we'll cut this live and then we're gonna go live on the managed by stats user page. It's not yet, so don't all disappear and go look at other posts, but. <laughs> Jeez, I'm getting such mixed messages, Dana. You're just killing me. It's like, yeah, yeah, that's good. No, 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 kill it, kill it. I'm like, what's going on? No, but um, so what we'll do is we'll wrap up here, especially with that story. It's such a good example of like, you have to be ready to dive into some of this stuff. But um, we'll then dive into the Facebook uh, private user group for Managed by Stats users. And that will be where we ask you kind of something a little bit more chunky, a little bit more in depth. And that'll be only for our managed by stats users because we love you all, but we really do love our users more. If we're being, if we're being honest. Um, so, Dana, unless you see any questions there, now the, the the trick will be: can you end the broadcast without stepping into the frame of the camera? That's the real Crawl. challenge. Yeah, Crawl. right. Hands and knees no. below the camera. Watch, he's just gonna walk right yeah. in front of it. Limbo. Head. But, but, <laughs> but, what, but wasn't there a question? No. Yeah, he, he assessed the question and uh, the it might have been a it might have just been a comment. Okay. Danan hasn't actually said a single word, only given me hand gestures. Um so I don't know what it is. So we're going to end off in five, four, three. No, no, not yet. Don't do it. Hold on. <laughs> so like, share. Obviously, if you know anyone who, you know, would value this message, especially with Shane. Also, before we jump off, Shane, where um where should people go to um learn more about what you guys do? Uh what's the website? Is there a specific URL that's longer we can throw in comments? But if there's something simple, tell us now prreach.com to ours uh, or just Shane at prreach.com. Perfect. Awesome. Okay, good. I like it. That's simple. And we'll also throw that in the comments for everyone. Otherwise, um, if you're a Managed by Stats user, head over to the Facebook user group. Uh, for everyone else, thanks for tuning in. We had a blast. Um, and we will catch you guys next time. Now, obviously, you guys probably noticed today is Tuesday. We usually do the podcast Wednesday. But um, if we're being honest, I have kids out of school tomorrow randomly because it's like the start of summer or something like that. Oh. Yeah, that's why. Um, so that's one reason. And then otherwise, we're going to have the same usual training on Thursday. Um, I don't know the topic, but it'll be awesome. And then we have also How to Hunt a Whale again back here, Facebook, on Friday, 2 o'clock. And that is, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, my personal journey actually getting started and going into Amazon. And, um, yeah, we're going to have a good update for you guys on that. I'm going to have a good update for you guys on that. Some I'm really not cool going to be there. So. Jade won't be there. <laughs> It'll be just me. <laughs> uh, with that, we'll catch you guys next time. Three, two, one. <laughs> Bye.